American writer received the Pulitzer Prize for her greatest and only novel, To Kill a Mockingbird. With an international bestseller, please welcome Harper Lee. How are you doing today, Miss Lee? I am very good. How are you? I'm great, thank you. Now, Miss Lee, we know your novel was quite successful. And still, is how do you feel about it? Oh my God, it's amazing. Writing the book, I never thought it'd be a bestseller. It's it's all been amazing. I never thought that To Kill a Mockingbird would have any success at all. But at the same time, I was hoping that someone out there would like my book. I was hoping someone would encourage me, and I did receive encouragement a lot, in fact. I received so much encouragement, it was frightening. I also understand that your book was translated into several languages. How does that feel? It feels fantastic. People are loving the book that took me like a year to write, that someone is reading my book right now in a completely different language. It's great. So it took you a year to write To Kill a Mockingbird. Indeed it did. Well, actually, it took longer than a year. By the first year, I only had my first draft done. How did it happen? When I was 23, I received the best gift anyone could have ever given me. I have such wonderful friends, and they gave me a year's wages to take a year off of work and have that time to write anything I wish. I quit my job at that time and dedicated 110% of myself towards writing. Wow, that's incredible! I know! I love my friends. They've done so much for me. None of this would have happened if it wasn't for them. Now, I've heard that you are very good friends with Truman Capote. Oh yes, he was a schoolmate and neighbor as well. I've literally known him all of my life. He's one of my favorite writers of all time. He has extraordinary writing pieces of his own. He's amazing! So, Miss Lee, how is it that you came up with To Kill a Mockingbird? Well, a lot of the characters and ideas related to my life. So, the characters from the book are based on actual human beings. Yes, kind of. See, my father practiced law back at home. That is where the idea of Atticus came to my mind. My father also did defend a colored man, just like Atticus in the book. Dill was also inspired by Truman. Did Scott from The Killing Mockingbird connect to anyone from your personal life? Indeed it did. In, um, in fact, I think it kind of sort of relates to me. Scott is this girl who does not like dresses. A tomboy, I suppose. When I was younger, I was just like that. Exactly like that. I could care less about fashion, makeup, or dating. I was in a relationship with my studies, you can assume. I was a member of the Literally Honor Society and the Glee Club. I was happy with that. I stood out from all the kids at my school because I was labeled a top. Did that ever bother you? Not actually. I loved school, so I could have cared less. I've heard that you were extremely brilliant when it came to school. You've actually traveled quite a few times from different colleges. Yes, I have. After finishing high school at Monroe County High School in Monroeville, Alabama, which is my home indeed, I attended an all-female college in Montgomery. I then transferred to the University of Alabama. I was quite antisocial there. I did try to somewhat make a social life there by joining a sorority, but pursuing my dream of becoming a writer was always my biggest priority. I was an editor in the school's magazine there. I then joined law school until I, I realized that I was just a fish out of water. I explained to my parents, I was like, you know what, mom and dad, this isn't for me. Writing is my dream, it's my true call. I then moved to Oxford University, then to New York City to follow my dreams. That's where it all fell into place. Did it all came easy in New York? No, not at all. When I arrived in New York, I still had no agent, I had nothing. I worked as a ticket agent for the British Overseas Corporation. I then reunited with Truman there, and that's when my friends gave me the money to make my dream come true. Did you write anything else besides The Killer Mockingbird? Yes, I have written several books, all unfinished. I was not satisfied with what I had and put it aside. I did focus my time on helping Truman research the murder case, which turned into his greatest book in cold blood. How much do you like reading? Very. See, in a society where people have laptops, cell phones, iPods, and minds like empty rooms, I still <coughs> plod among my books. Now I've heard you don't like public speaking. Honestly, I don't. I've never been a fan of interviews either. But from the bottom of my heart, I'm blessed to be here with you today. 
I just don't like the attention of the camera. I went through so much publicity with To Kill a Mockingbird. I said what I've had to say, and I will not say it again. But I've been really pumped. I received honorary degrees and attended school luncheons who have written essays. Miss Lee, how does it feel to be portrayed in films? It's crazy. I was portrayed in Catherine Keener's film, Capote, and also Sandra Bullock's film, Infamous, and by Tracy Hoyt in Scandalous Me, The Jacqueline Suzanne Story. Truman has also told me that I've inspired his story. He's one crazy man. That's been all for today. A wonderful applause to Miss Harper Lee.